copper pot was built around 1921. And if you remember the story of the cement armada, we had outgrown our pot capacity. There was need for an expansion. That expansion took us to the building of the Tinkan Island port and, of course, the Apapa Uroshoki Expressway was built then to evacuate the port and serve the industrial cluster and then to take goods out of Lagos through Uroshoki to Lagos Ibado Expressway. Three years ago, when the President Muhammad Buhari led federal government through the Ministry of Works and Housing under the able leadership of the Honorable Minister, Mr. Babatunde Raji Fashala S.A.N., embarked upon the total reconstruction of the Akpapa Oshodi Uwuroshuki Ojota Expressway, some felt it couldn't be done. But today, in just over 30 months of dogged hard work, the Akpapa Uwuroshuki Expressway is wearing a new look with most sections completed as work continues to move at a steady pace. You see, when you are discussing uh, projects, you must go back to the baseline. What was it before now? I'm not worried about the significant effect on the economy and also on the, yeah, the gridlock and all of that. For me, uh, the most important consideration we can give is about human lives. Every week you find one or two containers falling on pedestrians, falling on the cars, you know, crushing people and killing people all over the place because of the potholes and poor condition of the road which necessitated that. That's, that's for me the most important point we should be looking at. First constructed in the early 70s, there have only been three previous interventions for rehabilitation works at different sections of the very important road in 2009 2012 and 2016. People are going to work, people are going to market, people are going to hospitals, and they are caught up in hold up. For instance, if you want to go from point A to B, taking you five hours because of the lack of good road. Can you imagine the fuel you will spend? Now, if you are able to do that road, the time spent will be tremendously reduced and people will go within the shortest possible time. For over 43 years, constant heavy traffic passed through this road, weakening its structure and making the need for urgent rehabilitation something of utmost necessity. Under the leadership of the Honorable Minister, Mr. Babatunde Raji Fashala, SAN, the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing in November 2018 began an aggressive rehabilitation work on the road, signing a 73 billion Naira contract with major partners and stakeholders under the Road Infrastructure Tax Credit Scheme, RITCS, of the federal government who are committed to seeing the access road to the port freed of the bottlenecks caused by the bad sports, abandoned trucks and articulated vehicles along the access. For tanker trucks that is coming from other parts of the country to so get to this axis, it's, go, it's, it's used to be very tough. And those ones that are even fortunate to get here, going out with a loaded truck will be very disastrous. Accidents, tanker trucks falling down, petroleum products wasted, brings about a big loss to, to petroleum marketers. So with the level of construction work that is going on now, it's going to be a very good development to this community and to we marketers in general. 
the Nigerian federal government is executing road rehabilitation, reconstruction, and repair over a stretch of 13,000 kilometers out of the 35,000 kilometers of federal road network. So the resources are just not enough. So from direct budget, but we are also looking at road infrastructure tax credit where the private sector can intervene, build the road, uh, and in essence, advance their tax to government to build the road and then claw that back over time. So the Dangote Group has used that road infrastructure tax credit to intervene on their Papa Shopee Expressway. No system works without two key elements in them, interrelationship and interdependence. So if you look at the whole basket of the projects that are being put in place, what the Honourable Minister and the government is simply doing is to integrate each and every project to have a whole basket of projects that will drive the national economy and bring about the desired development. This is the thinking and this is what drives the conception and implementation of projects globally overall. Apapa Oshodi Owarozoki, the former toll gate, was awarded in 2018 to Dangote Industries Limited, subcontracted to ITEC uh, for the purpose of a reconstruction. The entire length of the road was divided into four sections and they started doing the complete rehabilitation. The current administration is undertaking the full reconstruction of the entire alignment using rigid pavement, otherwise known as concrete, due to the constant high traffic volume and haulage activities to and from the port. Materials used in the rigid pavement are the natural aggregate and cement. And uh, you know we have cement in abundance in this country, we don't have to import, so it's safe to say that we are using 100% uh, local content in that uh, road. Reinforcement was introduced and then concrete was now cast on it. And the, the essence of it is to make it last longer than the normal flexible pavement. And you know that this route, particularly because it's serving as the essence from the port, carry a lot of traffic. All the vehicles that are going outside Lagos, other parts of the country. This is the major route that they use. You see the reinforcement on the ground. You have uh, Y12 on the horizontal and the Y20 on the vertical. The thickness is 20 cm, while we have the width of 6.58. After the paver goes with the concrete, with the specified alignment and thickness, there's another one behind, they call TCM. That one, the purpose is for curing. It textures and then applies chemical for curing on the pavement. So with that, it enables it if, to minimize the level of uh, cracks you'll experience on the pavement. So with that chemical on it, it helps to block any holes of the cracks on top of it. In fact, I mean, like we are just to join us because I want to share a lot of fun like I have to follow. At we pick it. So in cotton shade, in fact, me in the old way, when they come across in Kobai, we can want to upgrade, go out attacking, you see there, come to our concrete, me. Because I want you to tell me notice, but you should tell her, oh, King Concrete. You can ask another person, or more than two persons, or more than two people. The level of construction what is going on is it's perfect. The thickness of the concrete, the reinforcement they are using, they are all of standard. We are grateful to them. To ease port congestion, gridlock and reduce discomfort for road users during the rehabilitation exercise, the project was divided into four sections. Section 1 runs from Port Gate to Tinkan to Beachland, including Liverpool Road, and covers 8.52 kilometers. Section 2 runs from Beachland to Seller Bus Stop all of 8.2 kilometers. Section 3 is a 9.1 kilometer road running from Seller bus stop to Antony. 
while Section 4, the last leg of the road, runs from Antony Village to Ojota Old Toll Gate and is 10.2 kilometers in length. You want to start the road construction? There are some old up we do face every time, like leaving home around 5 o'clock and come to the road show there around 7 o'clock and you'll be here at 10 o'clock because of the road construction. But since they have been here for a little while now, from this old year to here, it's just 5 minutes. So it's very, very encouraging and perfect. Every good thing will come with a price. And so, as, as you said, no pain, no gain. So, at the end of the day, you all have the cost to smile. Thank you for that, Governor. Abiodun Ahmed, or Latumbosun, is a container truck driver who has been driving trailer trucks for a living for over 15 years along this ever busy road. In all that time, he has seen the best days of the road, which he had thought were gone forever. But now, he is glad to say those days are gradually returning. The situation is the same for many people here along the 35-kilometer stretch of the Akwakwa Oroshoki Expressway, spanning Nigeria's biggest port in Lagos all the way through Oshodi and Oroshoki and on toward the old toll gate at Ojota. But what makes the Akwakwa Oroshoki such an important road network? Well, for one, it is the only road network that links to Africa's fourth busiest ports, the Akwakwa and Tinkan ports. The amount of business revenue generated by the Akwakwa and Tinkan Island ports last year alone was in excess of 382 billion naira. These revenues account for over 70% of Nigeria's import cargoes and over 70% of revenues collected by the government from the seaports. That road in particular is the, is the nerve center of the Nigeria's economy because that's why goods move in and out of the ports for import and for exports. It takes from Apapa port, from the main gate, to Ilela in Niger. So when you have such kind of situation, it's like strangulating the national economy, it's expiating the economy in such a way that uh, time is wasted in terms of clearing of goods and services and delivery, and also in terms of man hour that is wasted in the area of evacuating goods and services. Then go forward, fast forward two or three years down the line. You can go and see for yourself. Beyond the condition of the road that has been improved, freeing up movements of goods and services into the port, reducing man hour in terms of clearing and evacuating of containers, and then again, the attendant uh, issue of uh, following containers on uh, pedestrians and vehicles in, in Lagos, I think, for me, that is the biggest achievement of this administration, the Muhammad Buhari administration. Because of the reconstruction that has taken place, the socio-economic activities on this road has increased. And uh, a lot of people that have even abandoned their property at Apapa, they are coming back because of the investment the federal government has done on this road. Who are the people that will benefit most? Exporter will benefit, importer will benefit, the tanker driver, the truck driver. You will see a lot of containers that have been moved on this road. Look at this uh, tanker going now. We have a lot of tank farm within Apapa. So this road is very strategic, very important, and it's uh, very useful, not only to Lagosian, but to everybody in this country, because it's a major seaport road. Over 600 direct and 1,000 indirect jobs have been created, improving means of livelihood for many putting food on their tables and offering opportunities for increased on-the-job experiences and knowledge transfer as well as wealth transfer for Nigerians 
through the use of about 90% locally sourced raw materials on the project. Everyone, artisans, traders, market men and women, and even technical hands agree that the Akpakpa Warunshoki Road project is putting food on their tables and value in their lives. As a matured man, you have to come out also with him at least where you go feed it to help your own family, to help your own life. In this work that you're doing at least, me from here feed my family, take care of my mother, take care of my wife, my children, my brothers. So they have to help me a lot. Monshicheni Road Construction, Nilipapu Under Bridge, Lepo. What is it? One and a half years, Monshicheni Road Construction. In fact, it is actually a source of livelihood for so many of us. From the engineers down to the carpenters, to the laborers, even the mechanics, there is a lot of trade skills that that is encompassing in this uh, project currently. Even in this uh, COVID period, where a lot of organizations have actually downsized, some have even laid off, some are even out of business because they cannot operate physically. But we are still here, gamefully engaged and uh, that's a good one and hopefully we'll still get more and more of this project but you see you know that 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 you in road construction, everybody benefits. Land values around the place where the road is being built go up by 30 to 40 percent. Income they will get from selling their land after the road is built has increased by 40 percent. That's progressive politics. During the construction, People who hitherto were not employed have work from artisans to laborers to contractors to suppliers. The supply of diesel, lubricants, fuel to keep all the machines and operations going. So the impact is multidimensional really in terms of employment. You will also see food vendors keeping the staff and the construction team nourished. So, a, a, a political arrangement that commits to infrastructure, social welfareism, it is the interventions that have been made to give relief to people. Those are the reasons that government makes sense for me. And I think those are the reasons that it should make sense for those who subscribe to our ideology of progressivism, which is to say that we are committed to improving the condition of the human being. Midway into the year, and with the other three sections having reached over 70% work completion level on the average, the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing is set to meet its December 2021 deadline for completion and delivery of the project. Section 2 is newly awarded, and the contractor are working. You know, the process, you know, they pulverize, after pulverize, they, they stabilize. After stabilization, they will now prime and compense concrete work. Contractors are seriously working and uh, they will meet up with the completion date. Three years later, tales of lost time, lost revenue, accidents and general disruption in the quality of life of workers, pedestrians and residents along these axes and all things of the past, as portions of the Akpapa Oroshoki Road have begun to see major transformations from what they used to be. But they don't fall for this road, though, for that Ilasa site. You do that, that I wear for. And there's one pothole, one big pothole there. So I did not know. 
So I drive my girl past that place. So my girl fall on that place. That is the bad experience I had in this road. So now that they are doing the road, it's improving my business a lot. I mean, we are enjoying with the girl right now. Both the transport people in this road, we are enjoying the road. I'm going to by the provision of that road, a lot of tempers will calm down. You know, all these serious uh, ups and downs and uh, rushing and it will ease up. Brain will think and the production will increase in every aspect of our, our lives. Now that activity has begun to return along the stretches of the completed segments, these traders, transporters and pedestrians are beginning to enjoy a taste of what life would be like when the entire project is completed by December 2021. The way it is right now, I can't even remember how bad it was. The road has been fixed. It allows for free flow. Anytime I come to work, then I don't get to face um, any traffic. I think the whole thing is just well organized. Accident occurred because of uh, potholes, and it was terribly bad. But it's very much okay now, very much okay, very much. All of these assets were built since 1975, and apart from patching and repair, this is the first attempt by any government since 1975 to really renew that infrastructure. So what we have done really is a final solution to that Apapa or Shoki uh, axis. Of course, the correlating benefit is that the central spine of Lagos, which is the uh, Fonshaw Williams, the Kumudu Road Avenue, will be relieved from footprint of trucks and the carbon monoxide and the impact on air quality because as we finish the road now, the trucks will now use the Apapa Wonshoki Expressway to evacuate out of Lagos than go through the city. The city is actually longer for them. They don't want it, but they have to fall back on it when that road essentially collapses. With the rigid pavement method of construction adopted, this new road is expected to last 40 years and would match international standards, much like any other found in the Western world. This is a, a fantastic asset that is being built for, for, for Nigeria. Because once it's built, it's there for minimum 50 years. It should last 50 years. Of course, like I said, you have to do maintenance. The drains must be clean. But as a whole, it requires far less maintenance than an asphalt road. So by us doing a concrete road, it can withstand the heavy loads. There's trailers, there's buses, there's trucks. It's, it's a main heart line to the port. So the whole idea is to create a ex special express lane to the port by allowing free flow. That means inflow and outflow of materials, goods. The whole country's production will be doubled because you're having a quick inflow and outflow. You won't have any delays. Nigerians must expect to see improved and increased maintenance of public assets, roads and bridges. So sustainability is also a part of the Buhari administration's long-term infrastructure and economic development uh, mechanisms. Alex Okafo and others like him who use this stretch of the Akpakpa Oronshoki Road will have stories to tell about the glaring transformation of the road when fully completed. This is because the team of visionaries led by the Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Raji Fachala SAN, created a legacy that will last for many years to come. I thank the Federal Government of Nigeria for helping us as a transporter to do this uh, Tinkan Second Gate Road. In fact, all of us, we are very happy now. We know that things will move 
easily. We know more suffering, both uh, entering inside terminal, both uh, transport higher or whatever. This will move accordingly. Everybody will be happy. I thank them for that. Positive mental attitude is the key. Nigerians must be able to look backward and to see what it was before now and to appreciate our modest effort, this administration's modest effort to improve the infrastructure. And I think so much has been done. We agree, yes, a lot more needs to be done, but so much has been done. And uh, we must appreciate the effort of this administration. We are always ever ready to listen to the uh, complaint of Nigerians and to address them resources permitting. So basically, we want to be positive and want Nigerians to be positive about what this administration is doing. This is what the Akwapa Orunshoki Road would bring. Ease of life, greater productivity, and an assurance that the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing is committed to delivering the benefits of a people-oriented service across all walks of life.